Well, son of a bitch. It's winter time again. The pipes might freeze, so now you have to get in your RV and winterize it, depending on where you live. I'm gonna show you how to winterize your RV with an outdoor shower head. If you have one, a lot of trailers do, or just really any tubing like that, they can fit. It doesn't even have to be this part. We're not gonna use this part. Stand by. It's gonna be great. So the first time that I had to winterize the pipes and put the RV antifreeze in, not the automotive antifreeze, there's RV antifreeze in the trailer to prevent the pipes from freezing for the first winter, I didn't really know where to begin. They didn't show me that in the pre, uh, pre-buy because that was in Southern California, shit doesn't freeze down there. But up here in Northern California, it's a different deal. So uh, I, I struggled, I looked all over, I had to critically think a lot of these things and kind of fly by the wire um, um, on and making sure I was doing them right. But if you have an outdoor shower, like I said, or any tube with these with these fittings on it, you don't have to get any special equipment. You can do it just from that. And I'll show you exactly how. Um, every RV is gonna be a little bit different. So, but the principle is gonna be the same. And I'm gonna show you how you can do everything from inside the RV. You never have to go outside. Stay tuned. Okay, and, and by the way, it's not winter, so, well, it kind of technically is, but it's not gonna freeze, so I'm not gonna actually do it. I'm just gonna go through all the steps to show you. So let's swing around here. All right, let me grab a flashlight. Bear with me, guys, bear with me. So you got these two valves right there. You can see, really hard to do this one-handed but I've taken this drawer out. So you have this valve right here and see it's in the down position. And you also have this one that's in the down position. If you change these like this, it will effectively cut off the water flow to the water heater. That is what you want to do when you anti when you put antifreeze through your, uh, your RV. You don't want any antifreeze ever going into the water heater. It's going to make a mess. So you got to shut those valves first and foremost. Okay. Perfect. Sweet. They're nice and shut. All right. So we are just in there looking at the hot water heater. Now we're going to remove this drawer here and find the water pump. Water pump shouldn't be too hard to locate. Um, this line, after looking how it goes, you can see how it goes kind of under and into the water tank. This is the feed line for the uh, for the uh, the water pump. So what you do is you undo this wing nut. Um, you know, I probably should release a little pressure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. We'll try it. We'll try it. We'll see if uh, we'll see if water comes spewing out of here. So what you do. Because this is where the pump sucks up the water, you want to come and undo this line. And this is where you're going to run the um, a little water out there. This is where you're going to come and run this bad boy here. Um, it's really important. These things come with those little rubber seals. That little guy, that little guy, you're going to want to worry about that little guy if you don't have it. Um, so what we're going to, what we're going to do, I'm going to pretend like I put that rubber seal on there. We're going to take this outdoor shower hose or something like it. Um, and we're going to run or not run, but we're just going to plug her on in there. And once you plug her on in there, you're like good to go, man. You know, you have your bottle of antifreeze where you can get it like Walmart or freaking anywhere. And the only challenge is you got to put this straighten that hose out a little bit, you know, maybe bend it but uh, put this into the bottle antifreeze, okay? So once that's in the antifreeze and it's gonna stay, you tiptoe very carefully over to the water pump. Turn the water pump on and it's gonna go and pressurize the system. And you're gonna be like, ah, oh, shit, what's going on? It's let it do its thing. And so what it would do normally, it thinks that this is in the fresh water, fresh water tank, but it's not. It's in your antifreeze bottle. 
it doesn't know the difference. So it's going to start sucking up and pressurizing the system with the antifreeze in there. So the way that you go and distribute all the antifreeze through all the lines is you just simply keep an eye on the, on the, on the level of the bottle. You don't want to suck any air bubbles. Um, it's not terrible if it does, but uh, it's just going to make it easier if you don't. So what you're going to do is you're going to come to each one of these and you're going to turn the, the cold on. Come over to the hot, turn the hot on until you get pink running out of that... Um, of those lines. And you're gonna come to the bathroom. You're gonna do the same damn thing. Cold, hot, run it till all the pink comes through, okay? Run it till all the pink comes through. And then uh, once once you see nothing but antifreeze going, um, your job's done. It's pretty freaking easy. I mean, I pretty much just did it. Like if I would've had the bottle antifreeze, that would've been it. We would've been winterized. What I do like to do is keep an extra bottle of antifreeze because I like to put it down into the black tank and the gray tank. It's non-toxic, so you can put it in the gray tank. Well, you're not going to drink out of the gray tank. Um, I wouldn't put it in, I don't know why I said that. I wouldn't put it in your freshwater tank. Um, uh, you could just drain that for the winter. Um, and then one thing you don't want to forget is once it's all pressurized with that antifreeze, go and turn your water pump off and then... Um, so you flushed out all, all the water. So the lines don't have to be full of the antifreeze because there's no water to freeze in there. As long as they're empties, uh, it's fine. Some people will get like an air gun and blow out all the water. Um, but the low point drains on your RV. There's going to be low point drains and I'll show you right now. All right. So now we're obviously outside. And these little fuckers will freeze. <laughs> so you got to make sure you come and you just uh, toggle those down. And all the water... Watch this. Little Piper Arrow. That's what I learned how to fly in. Not, not that exact plane, but something similar. Um, so uh, the low point, as most RV owners know, is the low point of where all the water will pool. So if you open those, it'll get the water out and hopefully put a little antifreeze there so those things won't freeze. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's how I learned. I took some risks because I didn't really know what I was doing, but just make sure. You can also drain your, um, your hot water heater too. But, um, and I'll actually show you how to do that. But just make sure that... Um, just make sure that uh, it doesn't go into the uh, into the hot water heater. It's not going to be. It's, it's going to make it bad. Um, I don't know exactly what it does. I don't think it's going to blow up. But um, you know, obviously, if you have this, this is the hot water release. Make sure it's cold when you do that. Otherwise, it just spews everywhere. Um, and then you take this anode rod out, and it just drains all the water. So you're going to want to do that before winter. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it guys. So I hope that helped because if I would have had my video about a year and a half ago, I would have been fabulous. So <laughs> anyways, not that I'm such a big contributor to anything uh, worthwhile, but um, you know, having a little bit of insight that you get from one video in another video might help you complete the entire job um, because every RV is a little bit different and it feels really weird because people are watching me talking to a camera like you guys are my best friends. So I'm going to let you go. See ya.